This training video is a capture of an interactive online training module. While this training video provides you with valuable content, the optimal experience can only be had by navigating to the Extreme Networks website and accessing this interactive training through our Educational Services portal. Welcome to the EAPS online demo. This course is divided into five sections, but how you navigate through it is entirely up to you. For instance, if you already understand how EAPS operates, you might want to just jump into the configuration section. Or you may have completed most of the sections, and now you just want to remotely configure EAPS on our four sandbox switches. You could link there through section 5. If EAPS is a new topic for you, we suggest you go through all sections sequentially. Start with sections 1 through 3, and then take the quiz. After that, you may want to try remote configuration in the sandbox. Select the section you are interested in viewing now. What is EAPS? EAPS stands for Ethernet Automatic Protection Switching. EAPS was invented by Extreme Networks to increase the availability and robustness of Ethernet rings. It's a proprietary protocol operating at Layer 2 for loop-free operation and sub-second ring recovery. EAPS converges in less than one second down to 50 milliseconds, comparable to Sonnet at a lower cost. Banning Tree is the IEEE standard protocol for resilience and loop prevention. EAPS has certain advantages over Spanning Tree. For instance, convergence times are significantly lower than Spanning Tree. And when it comes to scalability, there's no theoretical limit to the number of switches EAPS supports, whereas with STP, it has a 7-switch hop limit. Here's how the EAPS protocol frame is formatted. You can use the pause button in the slider below to focus in on any details of the frame. EAPS runs on gigabit Ethernet over fiber links and 10 100 gigabit Ethernet over copper links. Each EAPS domain exists on a single Ethernet ring. Any VLAN that is to be fault protected is configured on all ring ports then assigned to an EAPS domain. Each EAPS domain has a single designated master node. All other nodes in the domain are referred to as transit nodes. The master node of the EAPS domain has a primary and secondary port. The control VLAN carries EAPS Master Health Check Packets to determine EAPS ring status. Protected VLANs carry user data traffic such as voice, video, and data. One control VLAN is created per EAPS domain, whereas multiple protected VLANs can be contained in an EAPS domain. Each link can carry one or more EAPS domains. Maximum EAPS domain supported per ring is platform dependent, ranging from 32 to 128. For every EAPS domain, one control VLAN per domain is created to carry all EAPS control traffic. An EAPS domain can contain multiple protected VLANs. In fact, it can contain hundreds of protected VLANs. Here's an illustration of an EAPS ring topology. The master node has a primary and secondary port. All other switches on the ring are considered transit nodes. Navigate to the EAPS operation section to learn more about how EAPS creates loop-free resiliency, and a ring topology. Select the section you would like to view. In this section, we'll cover in detail EAPS operation. Let's take a closer look at these three operational states, normal operation, ring failure, and ring restoration. EAPS has a default and fail-safe mechanism for ring failure notification. We'll take a look at the differences between link down alerting and ring polling. We'll also compare the different functions the master node and transit nodes perform during ring restoration. Now let's take a conceptual look at how EAPS normally operates on an Ethernet ring. There is one master node and five transit node extreme switches in this ring. The master node is configured with a primary and secondary port. The primary port sends EAPS health check messages around the ring every second in a counterclockwise direction towards the secondary port. When these health checks are received on the secondary port, verifying the ring is up and operational, 
the master node resets its fail period timer and continues normal operation. All the transit ports in the ring are in a forwarding state transmitting tagged data traffic via their protected VLAN configuration and EAPS control messages via their control VLAN. The secondary port on the master node is logically blocked to this tagged data traffic in order to prevent loops on the protected VLANs. Now we'll observe how EAPS responds when a network fault occurs. When a link or node failure occurs between two nodes, they both immediately send a link down message to the master via the control VLAN. When the master node receives the first arriving link down message, it immediately declares a failed state. Then it opens the secondary port to protected VLAN traffic so that it can continue to flow on the ring. The master node then flushes its own MAC address tables. It sends a ring down flush forwarding database message to all transit nodes on the ring via the control VLAN. Upon receipt of the ring down flush forwarding database messages, the transit nodes flush their MAC address tables. Existing Ethernet switching and learning mechanisms operate per existing standards on the ring, so all nodes begin relearning the topology. What happens if a link down event is lost but the ring is broken? In this case, the master will not receive its hello PDU and will set its F flag. The master will then start sending a link query status message every second to the transit nodes. When a transit receives this message and its link is down, it resends the link down PDU to the master. EAPS also has a fail-safe mechanism for detecting failures. Both the fail timer and the hello timers are configurable, as is the action to be taken if the fail timer expires. We will discuss this in more detail in the configuration section. The default action setting is to send an alert, but it can be configured to open the secondary port. Let's take a look at that scenario now. If the master node is configured to open the secondary port on timer expiration, and if the master does not receive the health check frame or a link down alert before the fail period timer expires, the master node moves from a complete state to a failed state and opens its secondary port. It then flushes its own MAC address tables and sends a ring down flush FDB to all transit nodes on the ring. Even when the master node is in a failed state, it continues sending periodic health check frames at its primary port. Once the ring is restored, the next health check frame is received on the master node's secondary port. When this occurs, the master node logically transitions back to a complete state, blocks non-control frames from the secondary port, flushes its own MAC address table, sends a ring up flush FDB control frame to the transit nodes instructing them to flush their FDBs and triggers the process for all the ring nodes to relearn the topology. In order to prevent a temporary loop during the time the transit nodes and the master node detects the ring is restored, the transit node logically keeps all protected VLANs on the newly restoring port in a block state transitions to a temporary pre-forwarding state upon link-up but does not modify the VLAN state, receives a control frame instructing it to flush its bridging table, ring up flush FDB PDU, flushes its forwarding database, transitions to the links-up state, unblocks all protected VLANs on the newly restored port. Select the section you would like to view. Running EAPS on your network begins with defining the overall design of the EAPS ring in the desired topology, configuring the EAPS domain and its components, and verifying EAPS is operational.